All right, what's up, everybody? So we got coffee with Pat going today before I knock out some deadlifts. Today I want to talk about the dramatic rise in the popularity of using machines for your programming or even your entire programming. Now, obviously, machines have been around for a long time, and I don't have anything against using machines in your programming. Obviously, I lift at home, so I don't have you know any machines really in my programming. But as of late, there's been this skyrocketing movement on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube by people. And it's almost as if the barbells and dumbbells are kind of getting discarded or put to the side. And there's definitely some advocates out there for barbell and dumbbell, I'm sure. But it's, it's definitely trending in the direction of, you know, isolation movements, machine keeping everything very, you know, in a single plane and super contraction, eccentric, you know, I'm throwing a lot of terms around there, but you kind of get the general gist of what we're, uh, what we're talking about. So I want to talk about why that's occurred so much. And a lot of the people who've admitted to, we'll call it supplementing, have these routines that are 70, 80, 90, maybe even a hundred percent machine based. And some of that is definitely due to the fact that when you're supplementing, there's a higher risk of popping something. And so they go with these routines that keep you, you know, 20, 30% away from failure, or they keep it so focused that there's no stability muscles in use and you're not, you're not really pushing all the way to the limit. And what happens is people trying to start out with a fitness routine They'll find these people first because they're very popular on Instagram because of their physiques, they look ridiculous and got a ton of followers. So somebody's trying to start out and figure out how to go about creating a workout routine. will find these people and they'll see these machine only or 70, 80, 90%, like I said, machine based training routines. And it causes this shift where back in the day, people used to start with barbell and dumbbell. And now people are starting with machine only routines or mainly machine routines because they see these gigantic people that are supplementing doing these workout routines that are saying, Oh, stay away from the barbell flat bench, stay away from the deadlift, stay away from the squat. Like those are dangerous movements. And you know, there's danger with any type of exercise movement, but the benefit that you can get out of barbell and dumbbell people starting out, they, they lose that. They don't get that knowledge first they get the opposite they hear oh it's dangerous stay away from it you know don't go near it it could get you hurt um and the ironic thing is that if you go back and look at the routines of a lot of these people that are super successful now if you go back and look at how they started typically it's barbell and dumbbell which is kind of humorous it's kind of like they did barbell and dumbbell to get to here then they just use machines to stabilize and then they say well no i use i use the machines to get that big and it's like well, did you? Anyway, um, machines are easier overall than barbell and dumbbell, and that might stir some people up. So be it. But just looking at like a machine chest fly, somebody sees, and this has happened all the time to me. I've had people tell me like, "Oh, I did a, a 400 pound." I talked about this in the video earlier um, in the year. Go, oh, I had a 400 pound bench, and I kind of dug deeper, and it was like, "Well, what kind of bench? Like a barbell bench? Like a four plate?" barbell bench. I was like, no, it was on a Smith machine. I was like, well, how much weight was it? Well, it was like 350. Well, was it a Smith machine or was it like a hammer strength? Well, it was a hammer strength machine. Okay. <laughs> a hammer strength, 300 pound press. That's very impressive. 350, very impressive. That's nowhere comparable to a four plate barbell bench press. So 170 pounds on a chest fly. That's nowhere near comparable to doing 85 pound dumbbells for fly, right? I mean, that would be absolutely absurd, you know? So the machines, they're designed to make you feel good, which is not entirely a bad thing. When you're first starting out, first starting out I can see how that could be a good thing, but with everyone I train, I always start by teaching the fundamental movements, the barbell movements, the dumbbell movements, right? Getting those motor patterns locked in, like not starting out on a leg press, where your range of motion is, is very limited. Um, I remember actually for about a year, this is when I was 
like 16, 17, I was doing the Smith Machine bench press. Don't worry, this isn't a graphic injury story. And I worked up to, I want to say like 220, 230 for four, maybe five reps. And then I saw someone doing some barbell bench. And so the next time I was like, all right, let me, let me give that a try next time I come in, right? And so I loaded up 185 thinking, okay, I take 45, 50 pounds off. I'll just try and do one rep. I lifted it off. It went down. It didn't go back up even up. Bit. I got stapled to the bench. Thankfully, some monstrous dude was walking by and just kind of lifted it off with one hand. He was like, be careful, brother. Like, Thanks. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he was watching me and was already heading over when I lifted the weight off. But that was my first experience with learning, okay, the machine weight number is not real. It could mean anything. There's all these different pulleys. So that moment really stuck with me. And I didn't discard machines, you know, entirely, but... From then on, I, I started to steer clear of machines um, until the end of the workout. We'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but I started focusing a lot more on barbell and dumbbell. Now, I don't want to just go and completely bash machines because I think there's a lot of good things about machines. They require less stability, which can be a good thing um, if you're trying to burn out at the end of the uh, workout, right? Um, they take less time to master, which again can be a good thing when someone's first starting out. Again, when I'm working with somebody though, I always go towards, okay, if they can learn to do the barbell squat or the barbell front squat, they'll know how to do a leg press and a leg extension. Like I don't even need to worry about that. They'll self-explanatory once you can do a good front squat or a good barbell squat. Um, gives you the feeling, like I said, that you're lifting a lot of weight, which again can be encouraging. It's just then what happened to me will happen to that person eventually because they'll go from trying a machine you know, they're doing a machine uh, chest press with 100 pounds and they try and do 100 pounds at the bench and they just get crushed by it. It can give this false perception that you're gaining strength. Um, it typically creates burning sensation more in the specific muscle. And I just mean that there's, it doesn't require as much in the way of stability muscles, right? So you'll get more burning in just the chest if you're doing a chest press because it's keeping it in this solid plane of motion that you know it can't move out of at all so you know there's there's that pump feeling that people are going for right um if you're injured it can allow you to control the lifting scenario a little more so like if you're if your shoulder is hurt then you're more likely to be able to do more weight on a smith machine bench or a hammer strength bench or something of that nature however a lot of people would probably argue, not saying this is what I'm saying, but a lot of people would probably argue you're better off working those stability muscles because that's probably part of why you got hurt anyway in the first place and just doing less weight on the barbell bench. Um, now, there are some exceptions to this, like very serious injuries where people can't control their shoulder at all. And so the only way that they can work the pectoral muscle is having something that's controlling the plane of motion. Um, I've worked with people where that is the case. Um, so I have seen benefits like that from machines. Um, now why barbells and dumbbells are better, especially for natural athletes. Cause like I said, with, with the supplementing group, um, and maybe this is going to hurt some feelings, but you can basically do anything and you're going to grow. Right. And I think that a lot of different people on YouTube have talked about this and how, even if you're just taking the supplements, you're going to grow, right. Even if you're not lifting. So that kind of changes when you're looking at programming, right? Um, my personal experience over the past year has shown me that you can absolutely build mass and strength with just barbells and dumbbells. Um, I have no machines here at all. I just do the barbell and dumbbell movements. I've seen the best gains ever with dumbbells and barbells. It took away all the distractions because I would use machines before kind of off and on, you know, maybe I'd start with a leg press instead of a squat or something, but it was basically just a distraction. Um, it's almost kind of like the, uh, the grocery store. Like you want, if you stay on the outskirts of the grocery store, you're going to get your meat, your dairy, your vegetables. If you go into the middle, then you're going to end up with the junk food, condiments, the stuff that you could survive without similar with gyms a lot of the time. Now that I'm thinking about it, this wasn't even my intention to draw this parallel, but the dumbbells are usually on the edges of the gym. The barbells are usually set up on the edges, the deadlifts. That's kind of funny, actually. Um, 
So if you stick to the outskirts of the gym, depending on the setup, maybe that's the uh, maybe that's the way to go. That's obviously not consistent with all with all gyms. Um, machines are very expensive. They vary in resistance based on brands. So that's another issue with machines is that you're doing your 170 pound flies at this gym, and then you know maybe you have to go to the upstairs setup and you try 170. It's completely different. There's so much variation between the machines. Whereas if you're doing a 225 deadlift. And you go to a new gym, as long as they have a barbell and four 45-pound plates, you can put two on each side, you're good to go. So there's a lot more consistency between barbells and dumbbells. Um, barbells and dumbbells, like I said, it's, it's tougher to learn the movements. But I don't look at that as a bad thing, right? Like a pause pull-up. The pause makes it much more challenging, but I look at that as a good thing. Like a leg press. Do I really want to waste my time putting 10 plates on each side when I could just do a two or three plate squat and get the same benefit? Like somebody starts telling me about their leg press, you have lost my interest. I do not care. Like no offense to anyone that does leg press. Like I don't, I don't have a problem with leg press, but how's your squat? How's your front squat? Like can you hit depth? Can you pause at the bottom? Can you get a good set of 10 with like a plate or two plates, right? Like don't tell me about some machine. Not interested. I think machines are good in some cases. Um, talked about with the the shoulder thing, you know, creating a stable range of motion for somebody if they have a, an injury where they can't possibly, you know, work the stability. Um, some other notable examples being a belt squat where you can use the quads. Let's say you have a back injury or something, um, or you just want to overload the quads even more without toasting the lower back. I think that's awesome. Um, reverse hyperextension. Don't need to talk about the benefits of those. I mean, for back decompression and keeping the spine healthy. Um, and there are certain machines, like a cable fly, where you're able to keep constant tension, right, on the chest versus a dumbbell, where you're not able to get constant tension right at the end. But I've been doing dumbbell flies for a while now, and my chest has absolutely grown. Was doing cable flies before. I did see some gains. Is it, is it like worth it to me where I'm going to spend thousands of dollars to get a cable fly set up? Eh, you know, not so much. Um, I can do what I need to with, with dumbbells. Um, what was I going to say? Talking about the, the cable flies. Yeah, I've done, done them before, definitely, but I don't, I don't mind just doing the uh, dumbbells. Um, if you're trying to just burn out at the end of the workout, oh, what I was going to say about the cable flies is, that's not going to be my main movement for the day. I'm still going to do my barbell bench, my incline bench, my dips. It's going to be at the end. So yes, it can make it slightly better, but at the end, is it going to be the difference in me being able to bench 365 versus 315? Like, no, you know, it's going to help burn out at the end. And that leads me to the next point of, um, you know, they can help you push the muscle all the way to failure at the end of the workout, um, which at that point in time, like my stability muscles and my shoulders maybe are going to be toasted and so if i really want to be able to force some extra growth in the chest plant myself in a stable machine and burn things out right but again i'm not starting my workout with that and making that the be all end all of the uh, chest workout right same thing with the belt squat unless my back was hurt i would use that at the end i would not prioritize that um, over a barbell squat or a front squat um, Look at how Arnold trained. Look at how Ronnie trained. There's a lot of notable bodybuilders out there who, you know, every day of their lifting routine, incline bench, then barbell bench, then you've got pull-ups, then you've got T-bar rows, then you're going squats, then you're going front squats, then you're going lunges. Like, you, if you look at the routines of these very well-known lifters from... 70s, 80s, 90s. Um, some of the people that rose to the top, enhancements, you know, aside or uh, supplements aside, their training was barbell and dumbbell focused, right? I mean, look at Ronnie doing the five plate bench, right? Um, five plates for like five, doing front squats with six plates. Now I know people talk about his, his back injuries, but I, I think that that's a, that's a, a different thing. That's, you know, potentially more. And I think he's even going down this route now, um, finding out that maybe it was more 
related to the to the surgery. And actually, I saw somebody else comment that they actually he had a back injury before he even started lifting. So, irregardless, um, there were a lot of really solid physiques, arguably the best physiques built by barbell and dumbbell, and even even Phil Heath. If you go back and look at his early training, I know he does a lot more machine stuff now. He's doing a four plate front squat and just repping it out. And he's got some monstrous quads. Um, so I don't know things, things to, things to ponder. Um, this video spurred on by just me having to train with just barbells and dumbbells over the past, it's actually longer than a year, but I only started documenting documenting it um, a little more than a year ago. Um, but it just removed all the distractions. And I was able to see that, you know, the machines, it was okay. Maybe it added an extra five or 10%. Um, but when I removed the option of doing the machines, it forced me to focus in more on the barbell bench. Consequently, I have the strongest bench that I've ever had. Same thing with the barbell squat, the front squat, there is no leg press available now. So I had to develop the barbell and the front squat even more. And now they're the strongest they've ever been. Similarly with the deadlift, with the back movements. Um, my back is by far the strongest and biggest it's ever been. And there are no machines other than I have one cable setup that I like to use. But it's at the end. It's the last thing I do. I knock out those pull-ups. I knock out those rows. Then I look to adding something at the end. So again, not bashing machines, just trying to... Uh, you know, put a, uh, put a plug out there for the barbell and dumbbell lifters, right? You know, keep, uh, keep pushing and keep those, uh, keep those numbers moving in the right direction, right? Don't, don't get distracted, um, you know, and, and keep the uh, focus. Interested to hear what other people have to say about this. Um, maybe this will be a more controversial video, probably depending if I can get a good title and a good thumbnail or not, right? It's all about the, uh, getting the thumbnail. Um, so I'm going to knock out some uh, barbell deadlifts now and uh, probably some barbell front squats and barbell calf raises because I like barbell and dumbbell. Um, yeah, that's it. Thanks so much. Peace.